Hello, everyone. I'm Kate Baldwin. We are beginning with breaking news. Show us the transcripts. The Senate's top Democrat now demanding that the White House turn over exactly what the president said to Russian officials in the Oval Office, a meeting during which President Trump is now accused of disclosing highly classified intelligence to the Russian foreign minister and the Russian ambassador to the United States. And moments from now, the president's national security advisor will be speaking to reporters on this unfolding crisis, going before cameras alone, solo. This was not previously scheduled to be this way. That means it's a big deal. These will be his first comments since the president may have contradicted his original account of what happened behind closed doors. Stand by for that. Here's what the president has said about all of this this morning on Twitter. Taking to Twitter to defend himself, saying this as president, I wanted to share with Russia at an open, openly scheduled White House meeting, which I have the absolute right to do, facts pertaining to terrorism and airline flight safety, humanitarian reasons. Plus, I want Russia to greatly step up their fight against ISIS and terrorism. So where does that leave us right now, other than a lot of moving parts to follow? Let's get to Jessica Schneider, who's following all of these twists and turns. So, Jessica, what the president said this morning does that contradict what H.R. McMaster, his national security advisor, said just last night? It seems to, Kate. You know, this has become somewhat of a common refrain within the White House. The story goes something like this. A crisis situation breaks. White House staff and administration officials, they scramble to address and explain it. And then the president comes out with his own version of events seeming to contradict the previous explanation. And that really is how it went down after The Washington Post broke that story that President Trump revealed classified information to the Russian foreign minister. When it happened, the White House first issued several statements, one from Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, where he said that threats and counterterrorism were the only things discussed and not sources. Then Deputy National Security Advisor Dina Powell said flatly that the story was false and that President Trump only discussed common threats. And then, of course, there was that brisk on-camera appearance by National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster. Here's what he said. The story that came out tonight, as reported, is false. The president and the foreign minister reviewed a range of common threats to our two countries, including threats to civil aviation. At no time, at no time, were intelligence sources or methods discussed. And the president did not disclose any military operations that were not already publicly known. Two other senior officials who were present, including the Secretary of State, remember the meeting the same way and have said so. Their on the record accounts should outweigh those of anonymous sources. And I, I was in the room, it didn't happen. So a carefully worded statement there where General McMaster barely went off off script, but he only there mentioned methods and sources, saying those weren't revealed. But what we know from the extensive reporting that our team here has done, including Evan Perez, is that sources and methods, Kate, they weren't really the main concern. Our team was in touch with these U.S. officials back in March. They said even disclosing information about ISIS bomb-making technology and then connecting that to the laptop and electronics ban on flights out of 10 airports in the Middle East, That information itself was highly classified information that, if revealed, could cause serious national security harm. Incredibly sensitive information to the Russians when he met with them just last week. Kate? Yeah, notably not addressing it in those Mm -hmm. tweets. We will wait to see exactly what Adrian McMaster has to say as he prepares to take to the cameras. Jessica, thank you so much. So the reaction from Capitol Hill this morning, Democrats call it dangerous and inexcusable, and Republicans, at least right now, they are not coming to the president's defense. Here's Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell responding to the news on Bloomberg this morning. Well, I read the Washington Post story, and I read uh, General McMaster's uh, response, uh, which tends to refute uh, the story, (laughs) rebut the story. Um, I think we could do with a little less drama from the White House uh, on a lot of things so that we can focus on our agenda. So another powerful senator, Bob